from Ryan. Um, please share your thoughts on inexpensive, inexpensive versus expensive LED grow lights from general propagation and for microgreen production. So I have to say that I, my, my firsthand knowledge uh, and experience with this is limited to what I have done in the last two years in this greenhouse. And I have had some great companies send me some great products. Um, so I've demoed some. Uh, and then the other part of my experience is uh, checking on, you know, friends of mine, microgreen growers. You know, I've got, I've got a lot of friends that grow microgreens around, around the world. And um, I learned a lot actually on this last visit. And this, this was on from the field. And if you go back, um, when we visited living earth farms. So I did, I've done two visits at living earth farms, uh, go back in those videos to get a bit more on it. But one thing that Jonah did there is he did switch to a higher end led this year. And he said it was a fairly significant, significant increase in production. Um, you, you, you could probably just reach out to him and ask him what lights he's using. I don't know offhand. And I'm not sure if he said it in the video, he might've, I think they're from China. They're an import. All the China is just cranking out LEDs. I get an email every single day, uh, with some led company in China who wants me to, uh, they send me a free light and make a video. It's like, sorry, man, <laughs> got a lot of people asking me the same thing. Um, but I can tell you that there is a difference. And, um, you know, I, I've promoted the compact, uh, fluorescence for many years, the T5s, the T8s, they work, they're inexpensive. They, um, they're fairly efficient. They're not as efficient as LEDs, but they're cheaper. Uh, however, the LEDs prices are really coming down. So they're getting a lot cheaper. And one thing that Jonah said, uh, that he had done, so living earth farms in Toronto, one thing Jonah said, um, that he'd experienced through just trials. And Jonah's a son of a mad scientist when it comes to microgreens. I've, I've never seen an operation more dialed in than his. And I visited a lot. Um, is, uh, he says that with the, with the LEDs he's using now, 20% higher yields than a compact fluorescent, a T5 or a T8. So that's, that's pretty significant. And I would say, you know, if you're, if you're, if you can, if you can get a 20% higher yield on a flat of microgreens, think about it this way. That's the difference between, um, so let's say 20, let's your average 20, uh, $20 per flat gross Canadian or U S, um, on average, that means, um, a $4 difference per flat per week than a compact fluorescent to an led. So I think the numbers speak for themselves there. And so I, you know, if I were to do it again, if I were to build a, a microgreens operation again, I would probably, especially now that the prices have come down as much as they have, I would probably go straight to those leds. And one thing I did see actually, cause I, I, I visited three microgreen farms a few weeks ago and all of those farms are going to be profiled in the new iteration of my microgreens course that'll be hopefully we launch it at the end of this month um is uh i saw um david at micro acres he was doing some trials with the sun blaster which is the fairly common light ballast that a lot of growers are using uh which typically takes a t5 bulb they now have an led bulb that goes right into that ballast so, um, if everything Jonah is saying about LEDs is correct, then moving to that LED for those sun blasters could be a significant, uh, and fairly low barrier to entry, uh, upgrade for farmers that are already using those lights. So that might be worth something looking worth looking at, but I, I, I don't know, actually, um, I didn't get the full time-based testimonial from David at micro acres on how those lights are doing for him. Uh, so maybe, maybe that will come up, uh, at another time soon, but certainly looked like something, um, worth looking at.